everybody, welcome back to another video. I'm your friendly neighborhood dungeon master, and this week, we're doing some her starts. So, over this last week and a half, two weeks, I got a new her starts mold, and I wanted to cast it up and make something out of it, and I figured what better to make than the actual project associated with this mold. So we're going to make a three inch round tower, or is it four inch, I can't remember which one this is. I'll figure that part out later. What we need to do first is cast it. It comes coated in a fine layer of talcum powder and typically you want to wash that off but I usually just leave it for the first cast. Um, now I've already done some casting ahead of time. This mold needs to be cast 18 times and it took me about a week with my schedule in order to cast this mold the number of times needed and I cast it a few extra times and I figure I'll cast it one more time here for you so you can see exactly how I do it. Now I'll be using uh, Excalibur Hobby Stone. This is the good stuff. This is the stuff that I've been talking about before. This is the Merlin's Magic uh, Stone. This stuff dries extremely hard and is very uh, resistant to breakage which is what something that I really want for terrain. Um, I haven't had any in the past and I finally got around to buying some. And when you uh, cast it, it comes out this uh, kind of, depending on how much you mix, kind of a light to medium gray. And it's, it's extremely difficult to break. It's not nearly as brittle, like if that was Plaster of Paris, just that little bit of force I put on it would have snapped this thing in half. So um, even for these little uh, pieces here, so, um, my plan is to show you the step-by-step -step of how I cast the mold, and then we're gonna get into building the tower right away, so I don't have to take up too much of this video with the casting. So the first thing that I need to do is I need to make wet water. And here I have some already in a spray bottle. Uh, wet water is just uh, distilled water and a, some kind of a surfactant. In this case, I used a uh, Cascade Rinse Aid, uh, but you could use a flow aid if you have that that would work too you could use dish detergent or any kind of commercially made uh, surfactant that you have available uh, her starts web page recommends making yourself a measuring cup which I do follow that instruction on because it makes it a lot easier to come back to later now I found for my purposes about one and a half ounces of water fills your average mold so I made I measured out using a scale one and a half ounces of water and I inserted a cup inside of another cup so that you can keep reusing the measuring cup. I also have a two ounce mark here too for little bigger castings and a three ounce mark up here that I use for multiple molds. With all of those materials together, we also need a pounding board. In this case, I have my acrylic uh, pounding board that I made with some sponge and a little bit of a, a, a wobbly motor on it. This isn't necessary. You don't need to do vibration stuff. You can just pound it out to get rid of air bubbles. This mold in particular I noticed has a lot of nooks and crannies inside of it so it's prone to bubblage. So I kind of do both. I kind of pound it while that's going. I also do my pour while the motor's going. Okay so the first thing that I want to do here is I want to measure out my one and a half ounces of water. I'll go right up to that line. I'm gonna spray my board here just a little so that the mold will stick to it and I'm gonna spray my insides here so that bubbles release easier and it flows better into the cracks and crevices. I'm also going to need a paper towel. You can do this again, you can do this with plaster of Paris if that's what you have available. Okay so now for the mix what I want to do is I want to add my plaster usually takes for me it takes about one of these little cups and then a little bit extra you want the top of the plaster to be kind of crumbly looks almost like a cracked stone and you want the final mix the final consistency to be something akin to uh, pancake batter so you just keep adding plaster to your water until it won't absorb anymore do it a little bit at a time. I, I happen to know how much it takes for this. 
And this is a little bit, this is mixed a little bit thick, so I want to add a little bit more water to it just to thin it up just a bit. Much better. I'm, I happen to be used to the consistency. I know what consistency that I'm looking for, so doing it this way is okay with me. If you want to be more specific about it, there's instructions on the Her Starts webpage for how to do this, and they are much clearer than I can make them here. I'll post a link to them down below in the description so you guys can see what I'm talking about. Okay, and once I'm sure I'm thoroughly mixed, scrape off my stirring apparatus here, which I just used a, a uh, popsicle stick. You can use a spoon or whatever if you have a plastic spoon. It's gonna get loud. I'm gonna turn on my vibrating table and while I'm pouring, all the bubbles are gonna come out. tiny bubbles are coming out of all the cracks and crevices and all of the wet water was pushed out as I poured the plaster in which helped it flow into all the cracks and crevices so there were no major bubbles to worry about. I just want to leave that on long enough to make sure I've gotten rid of all my bubbles. Now I don't need to scrape this so I can move this off to the side. And now I want to hold my scraper at about a 45 degree angle. First of all, I should mention, the instructions say for uh, plaster of Paris that you should wait three to five minutes before scraping. With the dental stone and using the wet water, you can scrape right away as soon as you're done pouring. I've had no problems with it. It's worked perfectly in the past. So let's see what we got going here. So I want to use a little, at first I want to use a zigzag pattern. And from my estimation, the thing that what that does is it prevents me from pulling the molds away from the plaster and distorting them. I'm barely putting any pressure on the scraper as I'm going across. I'm just letting it rest on the surface. And I'm using my paper towel to wipe off any excess. You don't want to over scrape because then you'll uh, you'll scrape too much out of it and you'll end up with dips when it dries and your pieces won't sit together straight and you'll end up with uh, things that are uneven. Okay, so now uh, wait about a half hour and you can demold these. We'll be back. Okay, so now we can demold what we made here. It's been about about 40 minutes I had some stuff to do so this is perfect to leave it just needs to air dry a little bit you're supposed to put them in the oven or in a food dryer dehydrator I don't care it's letting them sit overnight open to the air usually uh, allows the plaster to dry well enough if you cast it really thin it'll crack that piece broke a little bit but that was more my fault than the fault of the plaster I'm pretty meticulous when it comes to cleaning my molds. You can use your fingers to do this part. I just like to make sure the thing's clean pretty much all the way before I put it away, before I'm done with it, or before I move on to the next casting. I clean up my surface usually. Okay, and if you need to, you're ready to go again. But I've already done my casting, so I'm going to put my board away here. We've got some really interesting pieces here. For our tower. And see, this is the kind of thing that can happen. You can end up with air bubbles, just like that. I've not found a perfect way to eliminate them entirely. Some pieces just don't cast that well. Okay. Now I will clean the surface of my mold using my hands like this. And when I'm done with it, smack it out to get rid of any dust or anything that might have settled inside. 
and we're ready for the next casting. So you spray it with your wet water again, mix up another batch of plaster and pour it inside and then you'd be done. However, I'm done casting so I'm going to store this. So what I want to do before I put this away is cover it liberally in talcum powder and smack it dry. And that'll prevent the mold from drying out and cracking so the next time I want to use it, it's ready to go. Now you can see here exactly what I meant. I had to cast this mold 18 times in order to get all of the pieces that I would need to make the whole tower according to the instructions. So organizing them is going to help me build it. So I decided to separate the pieces based on size. We're ready to go. We're ready to start building our tower. The only other thing we need is some cereal box cardboard, which I have, and some uh, tacky glue. So we'll get that together and we're ready to go. Okay, so the first thing that I want to do to assemble my tower is lay out the first, the first layer. Okay, for the base level, I need to make sure that I have a big enough piece of cereal box cardboard here. I have just some from a chip bag. Um, you can use anything that has this kind of thin yet strong consistency. It's just to help the base layer stick together. And I'm just gonna build this up layer by layer. I have instructions here that show me uh, what I need to do for each layer. And I just need to start with some basic pieces here. And I'm gonna lay them out beforehand to make sure I have everything that I need before I try to glue anything down. Okay, and that will be our base layer for the tower. So I'm gonna start by gluing down these center pieces here. And I'm gonna glue them in such a way that it forms a strong foundation. So I'm gonna put some glue on the bottom as well as on the sides. Just a little bit too much there, so I'm going to take a brush and wet it. It's okay if the plaster absorbs a little bit of that glue and a little bit of that water. It's gonna dry anyway. I have to let the base layer dry before I really start going on, uh, going nuts with adding the bricks. That's the very bottom layer of the tower. So now we're gonna start with layer one. And that's gonna go on next to it. And I'm comfortable with putting layer one on top of this because this is fairly flat. Okay, now that I know just about how big the tower is gonna be, I can trim away some of this excess here. I don't want to lose too much, but I want to be able to manipulate this base. There are definitely some inconsistencies in my castings, or there was some shrinkage because this isn't quite fitting together perfectly. So I'm just kind of trying to space it out to make it as even as I can and make sure that the actual outside part, the round part, the most important part is as uh, cylindrical as I can. These pieces have to be snapped in half for this part to work. According to the diagram, there is a definite there's a definite gap here, so I'm not doing anything wrong according to the diagram, so that's good. Last piece of layer one is one of these staircases. This thing's already quite heavy. I imagine when this thing's all said and done, it's going to weigh a few pounds. Okay, we have the first few layers uh, foundational. I want to make sure they're dry before I build on them more. I also have to cure this uh, curvature that's suddenly happened in my base layer here, so I'm going to try to 
score some lines on here from the center out to try to alleviate that bend. Just go back around and make sure everything is nice and flat and that seems to have done the trick for the most part. And I think it has to do with the glue making the cardboard wet underneath here. And if it weren't for the fact that I'm using tacky glue, this probably would be a lot more difficult than it is. Okay, I'm gonna let all this dry, probably an hour or two at least, and then I'll come back and finish building more layers on it. I'm coming back about halfway through the drying, um, and I just cleaned up the, cleaned up the outside around the base using my wet brush. Now that I'm confident that the it's not going to slide around so much, I'm going to go in with my hobby knife and trim around the outside here to get rid of the excess uh, cereal box cardboard. There we have it. Freestanding. Now I'll wait for the glue to dry some more and then we'll get to building the rest of it. So you may be wondering why I took all that apart and removed the stairs. I found another set of instructions online which are a little bit more detailed and instruct you to build the outside of the tower first before adding the stairs. So before the glue set completely, I went back and uh, pulled the stairs out and now I'm just removing some of the excess glue that I put inside before this became a gigantic mistake uh, and wasted a lot of time. So uh, it wants you, the instructions that I'm reading want you to get to layer five or six before you even bother putting the stairs in. And since I've already kind of glued them together, that's fine. I don't have to worry too much about that. Um, I'm going to clean up the glue, finish layers five and six of the tower, and then put the, and then build the stairs. So I'm currently on level four. I also was supposed to make a three inch round form for the inside, which I did not do. But I may have uh, something that I can use in place of that. So I'm just gonna finish cleaning up my glue here and then move on.
that's going to have to do it for the build for this week. Uh, next week we'll come back and we'll finish up painting the tower. And I plan on putting it on a nice little base too to give it kind of a, a you know, blend it into the terrain a little bit. If you'd like to help out the channel, head on over to patreon.com forward slash the dungeon master. And for as little as a dollar a month, you get access to behind the scenes content, voting in polls, deciding what goes on the channel. Um, sometimes you'll get uh, behind the scenes videos from me, updated content, stuff like that. And I plan on doing uh, in the future some more live streams and stuff too. And maybe even some, uh, and even maybe some uh, patron exclusive live streams as well. So that being said, if you've enjoyed the video, don't forget to hit the like button, leave a comment below, let me know what you think. Uh, also, don't forget to subscribe. This is video number 46, I believe. And that means only four more videos to go before the D&D Beyond giveaway code. Don't forget to check out last week's video where I did the unboxing and the review of the D&D Essentials Kit, which is where I got the code that I'm giving away. I've been your friendly neighborhood dungeon master. Everybody have a good week. I'll see you next time. Peace.